Hey, what's up everyone? This is Omar. And this is Kamal. And I own Zeiss 16235 F4 for Sony E-mount and I believe the G-Master doesn't worth the money. And I think it's quite expensive, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. However, today we'll test both lenses in the city of Dubai side by side. And unfortunately, the weather is quite dusty. So we were thinking to suspend this video, but we decided to go ahead uh, because we are now making art here. It's just a review. So hopefully, we get good images. So we have a lot to work on to do. Let's get started. Here are both lenses next to each other. The G Master weights 680 grams, 1.5 pounds, while Zeiss F4 is 518 grams, 1.14 pounds. Both lenses have dust and moisture sealed and share the same minimum focus distance, 11 inches, 28 centimeter. Unfortunately, Zeiss made out of metal and very sensitive to paint peel, can get scratches anytime. I came out with a solution for this. Find out the video link in the description. However, the G-Master filter size is 82mm, Zeiss has 72mm instead. Zeiss has optical steady shot, OSS, while the G-Master has no image stabilization feature. But it does come with autofocus, manual focus, switch button. So why testing both lenses in portrait? Well, some of you will think, oh, let's grab the G Master and take advantage of the 35mm f2.8 for portrait. I don't really recommend this idea, better for you getting a prime 35mm f1.4 instead. Cause as you see here, no much bokeh at 35mm f2.8. As we testing both lenses at 35mm, G Master sharpness at f2.8 is remarkably better than Zeiss at f4. Zeiss looks quite softer. And uh, if you are looking for a prime 35mm lens, watch my review for Samyang 35mm f1.4. I kept links in the description or click the card upright. So if the G Master is sharper at 35mm, how do both lenses perform at f8 and f11 in landscape and cityscape photography? We set both cameras on tripods next to each other, applied same settings and set focus to the same point, and absolutely used a shutter remote release. Hey. Well, I know you wanna ask me about the sharpness? Both lenses seem to be sharp at f8 and f11. Let's jump to the studio and check this thing out. This is interesting. At f8, I find Zeiss is slightly sharper than the G-Master. I repeated the test three times and double checked the focus point, but still getting the same result. I understand how Zeiss performed better than G-Master at f8. Jumping to f11, I see no much difference between both images when zooming in to 100%. Went back and forth between the two images to find sometimes Zeiss is slightly sharper than G Master in some spots, and the G Master is also slightly sharper in some other spots. It's really hard to tell. No winner in this sector. Video stabilization. So, when testing stabilization, I see no remarkable difference between both lenses, while walking or handheld. Sensor stabilization is turned on in both tests. However, Zeiss has OSS, optical steady shot, that's supposed to offer an additional stabilization level. Lens flare. Zeiss seems to be more reliable when dealing with the flare. A light is placed on the left and lens hood is attached to both lenses. 
Hit us at F4 and F8. Next up, we're testing chromatic aberration. Bear in mind that you always have the chance to fix chromatic aberration in Lightroom if there is any. Next up, and as I'm testing sharpness, unfortunately I find images are getting softer with long exposure. I had to repeat the test couple times to find out the sensor stabilization is on in the camera. Eventually that was causing softer images. I had to turn it off and repeat the test again. Sharpness test might be boring to some of you, but the better you know your gear, the better you know your limits. So I will do my best making it quick and brief you out the result. At 16mm, G Master is on the left and Zeiss is on the right. Zeiss has more vignette at f4, and the G Master sharpness at f2.8 is almost similar to Zeiss at f4 in the center. And when zooming in to 100% at f4, the G Master looks sharper in the center, while both lenses get softer at the corners, but Zeiss seems to be even softer. At f5.6, Zeiss gets better to the point it looks sharper than the G Master in some spots. At f8, the G Master is still sharper in the center, while Zeiss is sharper in every other spot. I do not recommend F11 on both lenses, they get softer at F11 compared to F8 and F5.6. Stick with f5.6 if you can, it's the sharpest aperture of both lenses at 16mm. Jumping to 35mm, the G Master at f2.8 looks sharper and better than Zeiss at f4 in the center and corners. G Master at f4 is remarkably sharper than f2.8, while the center sharpness remains similar. Zeiss is much softer in the corners in all images at f4, 5.6, 8, and 11. This makes Zeiss lose quickly against the G Master at 35mm. Well, I'm a bit shocked, but if you are a landscape or cityscape photographer, try to stick with 16 to 24mm focal length. This test made me understand more the difference between both lenses. Eventually, I will stick with my Zeiss 16 to 35 f4 at the moment. I mostly use it for wide and landscape shots at 16mm. Indeed, the G Master has better image quality at 35mm, but I don't think it's the best lens for that range. So, if you ask me for a G Master replacement, I recommend getting Zeiss 16 to 35 f4 for wide shots and Samyang 35mm f1.4 as well. Alright, if you like this video, hit the like button. And on this channel, we make gear reviews and photography tutorials, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. This is Oma, thank you for watching and have a great shooting!